Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kaufman, a retired family doctor and a CLL patient myself, and the co-founder, executive vice president, and chief medical officer of the nonprofit CLL Society. And today I'm going to be presenting some of the most important papers from the American Society of Hematology, or ASH, annual meeting held in December of 2024 in San Diego, California. And the first paper I'm going to talk about is it about a drug that at the time of ASH had yet to be used in any humans. It's preclinical data, but I thought it was pretty important that you get a sense of where things are going. The official title of the paper was Preclinical Evaluations of AZD5492, a novel CD8 guided T cell engager for B non-Hodgkin's lymphoma indications. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. But let me start with the bottom line. And the bottom line is that bispecific antibodies have shown great promise in chronic lymphocytic leukemia, small lymphocytic lymphoma, and are even more advanced in other lymphomas. But they can cause serious adverse events, specifically CRS or cytokine release syndrome, which is where cytokines or inflammatory enzymes are excessively released, and neurotoxicity, which is where there's inflammation of the brain, which is not as well understood. AZD5492 is different in that it doesn't engage all the T cells, but more specifically, just the CD8 plus T cells in the hope of reducing these adverse events. This paper was presented at ASH, and it was an oral presentation suggesting that it was a significant advance. It was presented by Rachel Lawrence, who works for AstraZeneca. Let me give a little bit of a background. The potential of bispecific antibodies is tremendous, but it's been stifled by their toxicities. This is a preclinical study. There's no human data yet, but it is coming. This research is pushing to find a new way to use our immune system to help us fight our CLL, a new kind of immunotherapy. All the experimental bispecific that exist and the new, this new one, which is three-armed or tri-specific AZD5492, it doesn't have a name yet, just numbers, are being developed for CLL and SLL, work by targeting the cancer cell and unfortunately all the normal B cells through their CD20 arm. This is a marker on the surface of the cells that say that it's a B cell and it's found on cancerous B cells but also on normal B cells. However, unlike all the other bispecific mon monoclonal antibodies that engage all the T cells, and the T cells, and this is a little bit of an oversimplification, are basically CD4 positive or CD8 positive, they engage them with their CD3 arm, which attaches to all the T cells. This novel uh, tri-specific AZZ5492 preferably, preferentially attaches to the CD8 positive T cells by targeting CD8 and the T cell receptor on their second and third arm. That's what makes them a tri-specific. The hope is that this will lead to less cytokine release Cytokines are those inflammatory en enzymes, and therefore less cytokine release syndrome and neurotoxicity without lessening the potent cancer-killing benefits of immunotherapy. This is an incredible oversimplification, but CD8 positive T cells are the actual killers or cytotoxic T cells that actually are the serial killers of the cancer. And CD4 T cells are the helper cells that release cytokines, or these enzymes, to guide and enhance the attack on the cancer. Let's talk about the methods of the trial. It was a preclinical study that was done in humanized mice that were engrafted with B-cell tumors and in healthy non-human primates, specific type of monkey. So what were the results? Well, in the mice, 
The tri-specific antibody reduced the B-cell tumor load in a very effective way, and it was found to be dose-dependent. In other words, the more of the antibody you gave, the more the tumors disappeared. And compared to the conventional bispecific or bivalent antibodies that attach to CD20 and CD3, there was significantly less systemic cytokine production, but similar cancer activity. In the monkeys that were followed for one month post-dose, this is what the results were. CD19 positive and CD20 positive B cells were significantly and persistently reduced in the blood and in the tissues. And by the tissues, we need lymph nodes, spleen, and bone marrow. So this says that the B cells were being wiped out. Now keep in mind that these were normal monkeys with no B cell lymphoma, no CLL, or no other non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. What was found is that the monkey's normal B lymphocytes were depleted by this study drug. Cytokine levels did go up with the first dose, but didn't appear to cause any clinical toxicity. So what can we conclude about this early research? AZD5492, still doesn't have a name, is a new type of a T-cell engager for treatment of CLL, SLL, and other related B-cell lymphomas. Compared to epcaridumab and the other CD20 uh, plus CD3 bispecific antibodies, at least in these animal models, it seems to cause less cytokine release and to be safe and well tolerated. However, the results for mice and monkeys doesn't always equate with what happens in humans. The hope is that AZD5492 will prove to be a safer but equally effective immunotherapy for CLL SLL that is better tolerated and easier to manage. That could expand the uptake of this immunotherapy in CLL SLL. Its mechanism of action in this preclinical data gives reasons to be hopeful, but it's very, very early in the process. The first in human studies is now open for patients with relapsed refractory non-Hodgkin's lymphoma in CLL. On the website, we give a link to the actual trial, preclinical evaluation of AZD5492, a novel CD8 guided T-cell engager for uh, B non-Hodgkin's lymphoma indications. We also give a link to what's called the titanium clinical trial that uses this drug in its official name is a study to evaluate safety, pharmacokinetics, pharmodynamics, and the efficacy of AZD5492, a T-cell engager antibody targeting CD20 in patients with relapsed refractory B-cell malignancies. That would include CLL. Thanks for your attention. Thank you.